Hey, what's up guys? Alex here with a new video. Today we're gonna to be doing another comparison, this time between three cameras. I've never done a comparison this large, but when I was shooting my Sigma versus Canon 85 millimeter comparison, I happened to have the Fujifilm X-T5 as well as the new 56 millimeter F1.2. So I figured, why not compare all three cameras and see if the new Fujifilm X-T5 with Fujifilm's latest, highest resolution sensor ever in an APS-C camera can compete with full frame. As I do with all my videos, guys, I will be including the photos I covered today in the link down below. So if you wanna play with the raw files yourself, feel free to do so. Before we dive into the comparison, I do gotta point out that we're looking at cameras at three different price points. So I actually have it written down here. The R6 Mark II retails for $24.99 and the Canon RF85 retails for $27.99. This is the most expensive kit in this comparison and it comes in at a whopping total of $5,298 before tax. The Sony came in at the second highest the body retails for $24.99. The Sigma 85 1.4 retails for $11.99 for a grand total of $3,698. Now the Fujifilm is the cheapest, the smallest, the lightest weight, and the highest resolution camera out of this bunch. So I will say the camera retails for $16.99 and the new 56 millimeter F1.2 retails for $9.99 for a grand total of $2,698. That is $1,000 cheaper than the Sony, and you can actually buy two Fuji kits for the price of the Canon. But like I said, this video, we're gonna just get down to it. Can the Fujifilm APS-C sensor compete with a full frame kit? Let's find out. I'm gonna go ahead and roll a slideshow of all the images I took with all three cameras edit it with my preset. So you can see them, see how they look, see how the colors look. The only thing I've adjusted is the white balance. Other than that, all cameras have the exact same exposure settings and the exact same preset. If you like the look, my preset is available down below for you to purchase. After the slideshow, we will do a nerdy deep dive where we will pixel peep the files and see if the Fujifilm can keep up with a full frame sensor. With that said, let's roll the slideshow. y'all think? I personally think with edited files, the Fujifilm does an incredible job. I was surprised how well it kept up. Now there's obviously a depth of field difference, but when you're looking at the images, the new 56 1.2 is a beautiful lens. And overall, I was really happy with the results. Like I said, let's go ahead and look at the raw files and see if we can notice huge differences between these systems at the different price points and see if Fujifilm can keep up. So let's go ahead and check out the first set of images. Here on this set, we have the Fujifilm on the left, the Canon on the right, and you're gonna see that the settings are the exact same. So yes, they're both 1.2 lenses. They were both at 1.2. They both let in the same amount of light. So the only difference you're really gonna get is between the actual focal length, and that's gonna give you the different compression and the different background blur. As far as light gathering, this is a 1.2 lens. Looking at the images, you can see that obviously the full frame sensor in the Canon has more bokeh in the background, but overall, both images look 
great. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Zooming in at a one-to-one, -one, you're gonna see that obviously you can get closer with the Fuji. It's 40 megapixels versus 24. What's interesting here is the 24 megapixels in the Canon looks sharper and more detailed. I'm not sure if the Fuji slightly missed focus here, but you can see there's just a lot more detail and looks like resolution on the Canon. Let's go ahead and see how the Fuji does with the Sony. Here in the same setting, the Sony's on the right. The Sigma 85 millimeter definitely flared out more here and created a haze on this image and the Fuji 56 millimeter performed better. Zooming in, both look really good. The Sigma does look a little sharper even though there's a haze. Not sure of the Fuji miss here, but we'll move on and see if we see a trend here. Again, when looking at the image without pixel peeping, I think they all look great. Let's move on to the other set. In this set, we have the Fuji on the left, Canon on the right, and this one really impressed me. You can see I'm pointing the camera directly at the sun and the Canon fell apart here. This is the most expensive kit. And you can see that the haze and the lens flare just completely takes over the image. Meanwhile, the cheaper 56 millimeter 1.2 held up pretty good, still tons of contrast, and there is no significant flare. There is a little bit of flare here on the bottom, but overall does not ruin the image. Pixel peeping and zooming in. Here we can see both pictures look pretty good. They both look sharp. The Fuji does look better because you don't have this haze covering the entire image. And in this set, I think the Fuji outperforms the Canon setup at twice the cost. Let's see how it looks against the Sigma and the Sony. Looking at the Sony here on the right, the Sony and the Sigma combo did a lot better than the Canon as well, and it looks a little better than the Fuji at a normal distance. Let's go ahead and pixel peep. And here, the Sony and the Sigma, I think, do look sharper. The lens is contrastier. It does better with a flare in the back, and again, a camera with less megapixels looks sharper and is outputting more detail. Something to keep in mind. Let's move on to another image. Okay, here we have the Fuji on the left, Canon on the right. And look, I'm gonna tell you from this set of images here, yes, you do have bigger bokeh balls in the background, but the Fuji coming in at half the cost and half the size because this Canon setup is massive is holding up so dang well. This is super impressive here on Fuji's front. Let's go ahead and pixel peep. Zooming in, let's let this picture load here. You can see that in this image here, the Fuji definitely nailed focus. It looks very sharp. There is a lens flare on her face, which does take away from the image. The Canon here is a lot cleaner. There is no flare kind of coming in. Pretty impressive here on the Fuji. Let's see how it compares against the Sony. Against the Sony, very similar. Again, the Fuji here looks great. When we go ahead and zoom in and pixel peep, the Sony and Sigma combo maintain better contrast. There is no lens flare and does look sharper even though it has, I think, seven megapixels less than the Fuji. But looking at the images from this perspective, the Fuji is definitely keeping up. It's not until you pixel peep where you start seeing some of the differences. Let's go to another set. Here we have the Fuji on the left, Canon on the right. And again, the images look great. Of course, you have more background blur here with the 85 1.2, but the Fuji file is looking pretty darn solid. Zooming in, both images here look really, really good. Super impressive here on the Canon. The Canon has the least amount of megapixels out of all three cameras. I'm not sure what the Canon is doing here, but at 24 megapixels, it's definitely punching outside of its weight class because all the images look really, really sharp and tons of detail, even though it has the least amount of megapixels, like I said. Here, both images look solid. Let's go ahead and see how it compares against the Sony. Against the Sony, of course, you still have more background blur, full frame sensor. Zooming in, both images look great, tons of detail. You do have more detail on the Sony and that's just gonna be the sensor size. I think we can determine now that the sensor size does output more detail when you're pixel peeping, but when you're looking at the image, I think from this perspective, it doesn't matter too much. So we'll get to that at the end of the video, but let's go ahead and look at another set of images. Here we have the Fuji on the left again, Canon on the right, a really close up portrait. Zooming in at the image here, you're gonna see that 
The Fuji is just so sharp. Got the eye spot on. The Canon here actually missed focus. I think it nailed it on my wife's chin, but looking at the images, you can see that obviously the Canon missed focus, the Fuji didn't, and the Fuji looks better here. Let's compare it to the Sony and Sigma. And zooming in here, you can see that the Sony and the Sigma did not miss focus, and both images here look really sharp, and they both have tons of detail. Really good portraits. Okay, I think we've gathered enough images here to kind of gather some thoughts. I wanna compare dynamic range and high ISO before we wrap up this video. So let's take a look at how the Fuji does with underexposing a photo. So here we have the Fuji on the left, Canon on the right. I underexposed this photo about three stops. I did that because when I was doing this test with the Canon R6 Mark II, I wanted to see how far I could push it. With the original R6, I could push it over two stops very comfortably. So I wanted to see if the R6 Mark II could do that. I had zero intentions here, again, to push the Fuji three stops, but while I was doing this test, I figured, why not? So you can see here the original images, both very underexposed. Let's take a look at the edits and see how they compare. Again, here we're looking at an edited image, pushed three stops with my preset, and at first glance, they both look really good. Zooming in, we're gonna see that the Canon is definitely cleaner, and the Fuji definitely has more noise. This is an extreme test, y'all, okay? So don't think I'm over here underexposing every photo three stops. I just wanted to see how far we could push it. Here you can see that obviously the smaller sensor is gonna gather less dynamic range and pushing it three stops is definitely not an option with a crop sensor. I mean, maybe it can be. I think with 40 megapixels and some noise reduction software, you could potentially make it look better, but you can see here how the Canon definitely outperforms the Fuji in dynamic range. Let's take a look at the Sony. Here we have the Sony on the right with the edits. Let's go ahead and zoom in. And let's see after it loads. The Sony definitely looks worse than the Canon, but still looks a little better than the Fuji. So not by much actually, we take a look at it. There is significant amount of noise in both. I mean, the Sony does eke it out and it does produce a brighter image. And surprisingly, the Canon is the winner here. And that's Surprising because Canon has been behind Sony in the dynamic range department and here came out on top. No surprise that the Fuji couldn't keep up. It's a smaller sensor. Definitely held its weight here because it doesn't look that much worse than the Sony here in this extreme test. Now let's take a look at ISO and here's where I think it's the X-T5's Achilles heel. Let's check out these results. Here on the left, we have the Fuji at 1600. On the right, we have the Canon at 1600. Again, same settings. We're gonna go ahead and zoom in, and we're gonna see that at 1600, the Fuji's definitely showing more noise than the Canon, and the Canon's actually looking extremely clean. These new full-frame cameras are incredible in low light, and at 1600, I will say, is my max for the X-T5. It's still very usable, and the noise is very minimal. Let's take a look at it against the Sony and then we'll move on to ISO 3200. So let's take a look here. Here we have the Sony at 1600. Let's go ahead and zoom in. And again, it's a cleaner image, less noise, and the Sony looks a little brighter as well. Now let's look at ISO 3200. Okay, we have the Fuji on the left, Canon on the right, ISO 3200. The Fuji's looking a little darker in all these images. I've read before that Fuji kind of underexposes or doesn't actually have the same ISO values. I'm not sure how much truth there is to that, but here you can see that the Sony and the Canon are producing brighter results at the same settings. So zooming in here at 3200, you're gonna see that there is a lot of noise on the Fuji and on the Canon, it's still looking incredibly clean. Let's go ahead and take a look at where I focused and you can see the noise here on the Fuji. The problem is if you don't nail your exposure and you start just tweaking the exposure a bit here with 3200 ISO on the Fuji, the noise just increases by a lot. So you definitely need to nail your exposure down perfectly because the dynamic range and the high ISO on the Fuji fall apart at ISO 3200 and above. Let's compare it to the Sony and then we'll move on to ISO 6400. Sony's on the right, again, it's a brighter image. Zooming in here, you're gonna see that the Sony has less noise and of course it's outperforming the Fuji. Let's go ahead and go on to ISO 6400. Here at ISO 6400, 
Canon on the right, Fuji on the left, we're gonna zoom in. And again, the Canon is looking incredibly clean. The Canon at 6400, we'll actually compare right now, I think looks just as clean as the Fuji at 1600. And you can see all the noise here on the Fuji. We're even seeing some white noise and I haven't even touched the exposure here. This is just straight out of camera. Let's look at it against the Sony. Sony's on the right, zooming in. The Sony is also incredibly clean, which is very impressive because it has 32 megapixels. It's not as clean as the Canon, but it's almost identical and you have more resolution, so pretty impressive. Now let's see how the Canon at ISO 6400 compares to the Fuji at ISO 1600 and see if they're very similar. Here we have the Canon at 6400 on the right and the Fuji at 1600 on the left. Let's go ahead and zoom in and look at how similar those results are. That is insane. Again, I'm including these files for you to play with down below, but you can see zooming in, ISO 6400 on a full frame sensor has the same amount of noise as the ISO 1600 on this Fujifilm X-T5 40 megapixel sensor. Like I said, I think high ISO, it's definitely the Achilles heel of this camera, but we've seen enough images. Let's go ahead and wrap up my thoughts. I wanted to make this video and answer, can the Fujifilm X-T5 keep up with full frame cameras? And the answer is kind of. I think in normal everyday situations where there's good lighting and you don't gotta push the ISO or dynamic range, the X-T5 is a tremendous value. Not only do you have a high resolution sensor, you have an incredibly small kit. So when you really break it down, you have a cheaper kit, a lighter kit, and it is definitely incredibly capable. There's a wide variety of lenses and options, and I think the Fujifilm X-T5 provides a tremendous amount of value for what it offers. Now, when you compare it to a modern day full frame kit, the Sony and the Canon obviously outperform it in dynamic range and definitely outperform it in high ISO. The trade-offs are you're paying a significant amount more for these cameras and you're also carrying about double the weight. So there are trade-offs and there is no perfect camera. In the end, I was very impressed at what the Fujifilm can do and the results you can get out of this tiny camera. I've said this in several videos, we are in an era where if you're a photographer or a camera geek like I am, it's just an incredible time to be alive. Technology is incredible. I didn't even mention the video capabilities of these cameras because I don't really shoot video, but again, we have so much power in these new cameras that you really can't go wrong. You just have to know your tool and how to use your camera. That is key to getting the best results out of whatever kit you have in your hands. So in the end, let me be clear about this. If you have any of these cameras in your hand and you can't produce a good image, it is not the camera's fault. It's on you. Anyways, Hopefully you enjoyed this video. As always, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one, guys. Peace.